After the smash success of Donkey Kong, Nintendo went from aping other games to being copied themselves, spawning a wave of imitators and knockoffs. There was Jumpman for the Commodore 64. I really like the sound effect when he climbs the ladder in this game. EA's first game was a knockoff called Hard Hat Mac, which is described as a three-stage game without an ape. Crazy Kong was actually an officially licensed clone because Nintendo couldn't keep up with hardware demand. Listen to the sound when he jumps. Did Crazy Kong invent Mario's voice? Congo Bongo switched up the whole perspective and had some really fancy graphics for its time. Killer Gorilla was developed by one 17-year-old. I feel like Chris Pratt should have voiced this version of Mario instead. Wally Kong. <laughs> This game broke all barriers. It said, okay, I know we have a giant gorilla on the box art, but what if when you got in the game, you actually have to face off against a little doggy? In Logger, you went up against a big bird. In Monkey Business, you went up against a man. On the Spectrum, there was one called Kong, but then there was another one called Crazy Kong, but then there was another one called Killer Kong. This one was strictly for all the freak jobs out there in this world. Look at, it, look at his little smile. Little bastard, what is he smiling about? What did this Donkey Kong do? Donkey Monk went dunk? What the fuck? Why does he have a piano? Donkey King had barrels of fun, but Monkey Kong had the funniest name of any video game. For Ape Craze, they really had to scale back the budget on the Donkey Kong. Mario's Brewery was the first game to answer the question of why there were so many barrels falling down the building. On top of all the unofficial ports, there were also tons of official versions. Donkey Kong for Atari, Game & Watch, and Television, Coleco Tabletop. The one I had was Donkey Kong for the NES, which is where this song comes from. By 1994, there were 300 video games called Donkey Kong, all of which were heavily based on the original 1981 arcade game. So, to be funny, Nintendo put out a new game called Donkey Kong for the Game Boy, and when you boot it up, it just seems like another arcade port. Classic opening level, conveyor belt one, mm-hmm. The pies will kill you on this level. Spring one, that spring is fucked up, watch out for that. And then stage four, boom, you beat the game. Except, you didn't beat shit. That was just the intro. There is actually 97 more levels after that. How fucked up is that? The entire Donkey Kong arcade game is just a tiny intro segment in a Game Boy game. Looking back today, it's insane how many ideas and mechanics they crammed into this game. New Donk City, that's from this game. The Tiny Mushroom and New Super Mario Bros, that's from this game. And Captain Toad, you can smash through blocks with a hammer, that's from this game. The Double Jump and the Somersault from Mario 64, that's from this game. Except you do a cool handstand in this one. That shit is insane! It feels like such a fancy mechanic and yet it stems from a Game Boy game. The attention to detail is absurd. Mario reaches his little hand out to grab onto a vine. He can get squashed, stomped, burned, drowned. He can pass his hammer from floor to floor to his own self. If he falls from a medium height, he'll do a roll. He can swing on monkey bars. There's a power-up that lets you spawn in ladders or bridges. Just like the original, the game's success would propel its co-director's career. Takao Shimizu would go on to direct Star Fox 64, Pokemon Stadium, and eventually Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> In 1994, Donkey Kong fans were living large. Not only did they get one of the best Game Boy titles ever produced, but in that same year, they would also receive one of the best Super Nintendo titles ever produced. A video game that would take the entire country by storm. And even other countries too. It was released in multiple territories.